Hi, I'm Kent. I finally had enough pots to fill up my large kiln, and I just did a glaze firing. Here are all the results. So I fired my pots to cone 6, so this is a cone 5, cone 6, cone 7. Cone 5 is all the way over. I probably went a little bit past cone 6, and here's cone 7 that's just starting to bend. One of the things I did for this glaze firing is I retuned my kiln. About a year ago, I actually went and rebuilt my kiln. I have a custom controller inside of it, so it's running some open source software and a Raspberry Pi. It's been fun to use. It's nice to be able to open a web browser at home and just monitor my kiln's temperature. However, it also means I've had to tune it specifically for my kiln. So I retuned it for this one, and I was getting much closer to the target temperatures, which was great. I also remember to put in my cones. Don't always do that. And here are the pots. This isn't actually all of them. There's a few where I have some separate videos on, and I'm not going to bother including them in here. Go check out those videos if you're curious. I'm happy with all of these. I only had one pot failure. This one here has a hairline crack, so there's a crack right here on the edge that goes to the inside as well. These are all planters, so I think that's okay. I probably wind up using this one, so it's just got one bad side. Definitely would be a second. This one actually wound up with a really cool glaze combination. There's a lot of purples and greens this time around. These two glazes mixed together, I think, in a very interesting way. So on the purple and green theme, a lot of these I didn't have a lot of glaze left. So I wound up turning these upside down and then pouring the glaze down the sides. So here I poured the purple around the edges. And this one I then dipped in green. And then, so I didn't have any raw clay, I then poured some clear. I've got two different clear glazes I played around with. That's how this one was done. This green sometimes goes on a little bit thin. And so you can see some modeling effects in it. This one was done in a very similar way, slightly different effect in terms of the way it was poured on, but otherwise very similar. Uh, here's some spots here that I spilled the purple on. I was curious how bad they would be, and I, they're much less noticeable now. There are several where I just did green by itself. So this one here is one of those. I dipped the top in green, and then I did the whole thing in a clear overlay. Again, so I don't have raw clay on it. This one's the same green as well. It doesn't have the clear on top. I just dipped this one in straight. Here's a green that I poured on the outside with the same effect, kind of pouring it down. This one, I covered the whole thing in my gloss glaze. So there's this very subtle kind of striped effect on the outside. And here's another one with the greens. You can see where it got overlapped. Another. And this one is actually when I started with, I started brushing on the glaze and I got very tired of that very fast. Brushing on glaze is not my favorite thing. The surface finish isn't very even, so it's hard for me to get the glaze on the right way. So that's when I abandoned these and started doing the pour on effect instead. And this is another green and purple. I also brushed this one on. So I brushed the green on, brushed the purple on. I'm actually pretty happy with the edges. I was a little bit worried that I would get more bleed over from side to side, but I think it worked out okay. So shifting back to the purple, these are just purple and white. Again, I just poured the purple on and then I did the whole thing in clear glaze. So the clay body is showing through, but it's all nicely glazed. There's this one with wide stripes. This one here that's hiding off the edge with very thin stripes. I actually like this one. I like the thin stripes. If you've been following along, you saw not too long ago, I made up a glaze using some teal mason stain. I use that glaze on a few pots, so this was one of them. So to the faces of this pot, I actually dipped it in, and that wound up with a little bit of a triangle effect here on the outside, which I put the same base glaze with no colorant on. There were a few runs on this one where the glaze was overlapped, and I was afraid that they might wind up with a funny looking effect, but Actually, I think it turned out really well. So that's the teal. Here I used it on the top of the pot. I just dipped it in, and then I used my black glaze to pour down the edges, similar to this purple one. See so these very thin stripes? And then the very bottom I actually left raw, so only the black runs down here. I think this is a really cool effect. I wasn't necessarily going for this, but I, I like how it turned out. Here I alternated the same two colors, so I have the teal and then the black, and in the middle I poured clear glaze down the side. That way there aren't raw clay bits, and you can see different effects where the glaze got thicker and thinner and overlapped. I think this clear glaze gets a little speckly when it gets very thick. 
The last one, this is also that teal glaze. When I did my test tiles, I wound up with a kind of a yellowing effect, which surprised me a little bit. And I'm getting it a little bit here too. I'm not too sure if this is a thickness thing or a temperature thing. And I had a few more pots, so I decided to pull out the brown. So this one, I applied the brown pouring down just like the other ones, and then applied my clear glaze between it. The clear glaze and the brown glaze interacted really interestingly. I hadn't mixed these two before. So this is the original brown, this is just my clear glaze, and this light brown area is where they overlapped. So you can see this kind of interesting model effect. I also dipped the rim of this one again, just to make sure I had good coverage on the inside. So you can see these areas where the glaze ran down. I think that one's pretty cool. This one was done very similarly, very wide stripes. And the last one, this side isn't very interesting, but this side has a really cool effect. So this one I dipped the brown like that, so I got good coverage down most of the pot, but there was more raw clay than I wanted. So I actually poured the glaze on sideways on this one. So I took my clear glaze and just poured it, and it wound up dripping down the side of the pot into where it already glazed the brown. However, it created this really cool kind of river effect. So this side's relatively plain, and then where the drips came around, it's an interesting modeling effect. That was pretty cool. So this is also one of my more favorite pots of this batch. So there they all are. Waiting for the kiln to cool is always one of the hardest parts of pottery. In general, I'm not very patient, but I can always see the pots moving forward. Once I know they've been up to temperature and I've had a good firing, at least according to the software, watching the temperature slowly drop down is very, very agonizing. It takes the better part of a day for it to cool back down. The transformation from the glaze is always very exciting. Do you have a favorite in these? Which one do you like the best? As always, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.